Friends, art heads, it's James Com, your half-assed reporter, and we are here at 181 Orchard Street. We're gonna run into next to nothing, and we're gonna look at a show by Lori Teschler titled "Abject Objects." Stay tuned. We'll just come in and sweep the gallery. There's the glamorous Lori Teschler right there. Well, I remember seeing some of these paintings, or paintings very similar to these, back in the early 80s in the, the East Village. And I guess this is kind of a a little retrospective and also featuring some of the more recent works. Well, I think we'll start out uh, taking a closer look at this piece. It's titled, Untitled, I guess they're all untitled, parentheses, bathtub, and also I was mistaken, I thought some of these pieces were from the 80s, but uh, as I'm looking at the list, all these are from the mid to late 90s, although Lori's style was pretty consistent. Uh, one of the things I was uh, interested in that always kind of made me pay attention to Lori's work is her framing elements and uh, well I was looking at uh, some still photographs that I took the other night when I came by and popped in to see the uh, installation and uh, well I thought that the the frames and the way that uh, she kind of stressed and has scumbled the paint in made them have the uh, the illusion of age kind of uh, worn and I guess part of the title of the show is abject which is a word that I like this is titled untitled pink pool this is 16 by 24 I was thinking this first uh, group of pieces are all dealing with pools or sinks or vessels of water. And, uh, well, Lori, I 
mechanics to uh, build up the paint. Oh. Hey, there's Rick Kroll. <laughs> and I was thinking also, there's a certain kind of a reference maybe to painters like Moriandi. You know, someone that was working with a lot of uh, modulations of tonality. I kind of like this piece. It's titled Green. From 2000. This is 9 by 21. And uh, this is one of the few pieces that I've seen so far where she's she got some uh, kind of shiny, oily paint in there. Everything else is pretty matte. It's an interesting pairing. It's titled Red Dresser. And Armoire. of uh, the note of surrealism as well with some of the uh, individual objects. It's titled, <laughs> it's easy for me, Untitled Orange. And Lori is very good with her, her limited palettes. This is from 2000. Oh, she gets a lot of uh, a lot of mileage, and she's able to articulate her forms within that very limited limited set of colors. And boy, are everybody is starting to scream. This is untitled Yellow Room, 1998, and. I always kind of wonder what uh, this particular object she's painting is. This is No Exit. Oh no, this is Untitled Mirror Against Pink Wall. So I guess that's what, uh, that's what that image is. An empty room with the mirror reflecting back the other side of the empty room. No exit. This is also a nice piece. I like the, uh, the cordon in front of the door. by 17 oil on board and painted wood frame well I'm not going to uh, force my way back there behind the desk and uh, put the uh, the waitress uh, the, the bartender out of business we just look at this is like a series of tchotchkes titled Strange Pink House. This is 2003. 16 by 20 inches. And I would say this kind of represents the transition from the pieces with the painted frames and the very limited palette to what I guess is Lori's current body of work, which is more of a uh, fantasy, well, I guess you could say these might relate to doll houses maybe, this is titled Dark House, 22 by 28, and rather than the uh, thick 
slathered on paint that she had in some of her frame pieces. These are actually fairly, fairly thinly painted. Actually, they look like they're they're rubbed down, kind of. The paint has been scrubbed into the surfaces. Flying House, 24 by 28. Okay, this again is more of a limited palette. I think Lori does kind of a uh, nice job of uh, creating a kind of space, a ephemeral foggy space. Something is happening there. Some light from mysterious sources forming. This is Cat Lady. Oil on wood and painted wooden frame. This is from 2006. Well, I just heard someone talking about how uh, unusual it was to see this much of Lori's work. I guess Lori might spend a lot of time working on these individual pieces, so you're not going to get a show with 20 paintings that she's finished in the last two months. It's titled wheel, charcoal and pastel on paper, and blue spaceship, this is pastel. This is titled Flying Cat. Four and a quarter by 21 and a half oil and painted wood frame. It's 2005, so this is again kind of returning to her her frame pieces, but this is much more constrained in the paint slathering. And also, she's added this uh, shadow, so we've got kind of a uh, little character that activates the composition. Purple Flying House, 2013. interesting because I was I was looking at this and thinking this is just more of her the flying houses theme and then I looked a little closer and uh, there are these vestiges of uh, kind of rectangles in the background so I'm wondering if that's the windows from a previous painting of a house whether that's some kind of pedimenti coming through. This will be our final piece that we look at tonight. This is titled Neighbors, 30 by 24. Oil on canvas. This is 2012. at this and I'm thinking about her her themes and sort of the very subtle but very 
uh, evocative subject matter. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this little line could simply be like a uh, power line, electric extension cord or something between these two houses. But on the other hand, I'm thinking also of the uh, of a tightrope. This made me think of, I forget who it was, but there was a very famous tightrope walk, tight walker that uh, walked between the two World Trade Centers. At some point, they made a movie out of it, and uh, he enthralled New York and the world for quite a while. And somehow, it kind of makes me uh, think of that. Oh, there's Rick and Lori Teschler. These guys have known each other for a while. We won't say how long. My ex. Okay. Time to butt out, Rick. Now I'm going to get down and t <laughs> talk to Lori. Okay. Object Object, is that the title of the show? Yes, it is. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about how long you've been working on this show or how wide a time span this represents. Okay, so that's from the 90s on that wall. Yes. And this goes that's, till 2017. So the earliest piece in the show is something like 1996? 92. 92. Yes. And I was wondering, is that because you don't have any of the paintings from the 80s left or you didn't want to show them? or? It's really what Robbie wanted. So you had someone to curate the show and yes, yes. He came to my he came to my studio and he, he saw these images of the frames first and yes. he fell in love with them and he wanted to show them and I said I don't want to show stuff from the nineties and then he said well I'm gonna come to your studio and when he came to my studio he ended up liking my recent stuff as well. That's good. Yeah. Speaking of the recent work, you know you you did kind of get a. Uh, Maybe not a, a reputation, but you were known for working on these pieces with the frames on them. Some some of them have very thick frames with a lot of paint on them. But the recent work, you've kind of a lot of it, you've left the frame off, and it's just a, it's just a panel or a canvas. Yeah, what was that transition about? I just got tired of working with the frames, honestly. Now, did you make the wood? Do the woods and all the stuff that when you built the frames, or did you buy the frames and then paint on top of them? I, I found those pieces of wood and I would construct them myself. So you would have to make the panels to fit in the frames and then right. you would paint on the frames. Okay. Also, I was thinking that um, you've kind of thinned out your paint. The paint surfaces are a little smoother. Is that also because you just felt like you needed to change or was there some other reason that you decided to kind of change your technique a little? And then more of that ethereal feeling. Okay. I got tired of working with thick paint, you know. I've got one more question for you, Lori. I was talking to uh, Bob, and we were actually sort of commenting. He said, you know, I looked at some of these paintings, and, and I thought that they kind of made me think of Morandi. I was wondering... Who do you look at? Who has been an influence in you? Who do you think about when you're making your paintings? I love Moran. Yes, yes, he's great. But I, there's so many people I'm influenced by or I love, and then they're different than me. It doesn't have to be like my style, you know, honestly. But I, I love. To, I don't know. I love Moran. I love Goya. Goya's been an influence lately. Really. <laughs> That's, all. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway, Lori, thanks for taking a little time. Congratulations. The show looks good. Thank you. And good luck. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lori. This is James Com reporting on Lori Tetchler. Abject. Object. Or maybe it's object, abject. Here at the Next to Nothing Gallery. 181 Orchard Street on the Lower East Side. And you can leave your comments, criticisms, reviews, thoughts, opinions below. Thanks for
for watching and help me with this, folks. Thank you, Kate. Whoa, thank you.